thanks to the supporters of channel member Nathan Rowley. Now, I've got to say, even though it's, it's, I guess it's refreshing to have a more realistic target for the season, I was a little bit disappointed to see you think we're going to get relegated this year. Have a little bit of faith, Mrs. Wearmouth. Even, even the media, even the media think we're going to finish mid-table. I, I have faith in my young players. Hello and welcome to part 43 of Homegrown. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have our first two games in League One. We're away against Preston and at Preston. 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 We're at home against... What am I saying? We should. I could redo this. This isn't live. Um, we're at home against Preston and away against Plymouth since you were last with me. In fact, nothing's happened since you were last with me. All we've had is the transfer special. Um, I say special. The only special thing that really happened was getting Nathan Curry on loan for the season from Brentford. He comes back into the squad um, for the first time in almost a year. I mean, he did play five games for us at the start of last season, then went off to Brentford, made 10 substitute appearances. He's now back with us for a year. And hopefully we'll be able to make that even longer. Bachelor Epiteta is a good example of someone um, who we've got back on loan for a second season in a row. I am going to keep trying to get Kieran Hodgkinson back as well, but I'm a little bit worried because he's not playing anywhere. If we ever do get him back, he'll be, uh, he won't be good enough. Fulham really need to either play him or loan him out. He is missing key development years. Uh, but... As mentioned, Mrs. Wearmouth is asking us to battle bravely against relegation. So I interpret that as if I get if we get relegated, I shouldn't get fired. The media, however, are looking at a ninth place finish. Harrison Davies is in the uh, media dream eleven. He's considered one of the best players in the division. If we can keep hold of him, the window, of course, not closed yet. But if we can keep hold of Harrison Davies and uh, start the season well. You never know. We might be able to have an outside push at the playoffs, but I think this, bearing in mind we needed the playoffs to get through League Two, I think there is a good chance this is going to be the first season we stall in our march up the leagues, but at least we are upgrading the youth setup a little bit so the race against time isn't quite as isn't quite as terrifying as it was before, uh, because at least we should have some decent youth players come back through again in this summer to come. But this is the team that we're going to be playing for our first ever game at League One level. We're at home against Preston. Preston, who uh, were relegated from the Championship last year. So, baptism of fire and all that. We're going with Oliver Wright in goal, a back four of Bachelorette Piteta, Davies, Charles and Brewerton, Bandera and a returning Nathan Curry in midfield with Hamilton and Redmond supporting Beerith and Jessup up front. I think that's probably my starting, my first choice starting 11. Um, Zach Redmond, we did turn down that big offer in the summer, not 575 million, as I might have said in yesterday's episode, but we did turn down 575,000 uh, for Zach Redmond from Derby. So there's definitely... Definitely some potential that is worth pursuing when it comes to Zach Redmond, who's potential to be a championship left midfielder in the future. So we're playing him on the right-hand side of midfield. It's fine. It's. I mean, he wants to be there. He wants to be the inside forward, but Hamilton's got that role. Um, but Jessup, I think he's getting better all the time as well. He's another one with five-star potential. I think this is his year to actually have a proper run in the team as a striker and see how many goals he can score. Troy Cannon is obviously lurking, as is Danny Pritchard. Um, the bench looks strong. Um, to have Campbell, Whitaker, Cannon, Muir, Cissé, Pritchard, these are players that have been with us a long, long time. I mean, there's a couple of the youngsters starting to come through as well. Alex Williams, the young goalkeeper, Andy Hall, um, Van der Laan's back in the first team squad. I think we look like a decent side. The question is, are we close to good enough to compete in League One? And I think that is a big question that I'm not sure we're going to get an answer to today against the team that were playing in the championship last year. Although, I guess we're going to be full of newly promoted high morale and excitement, whereas Preston, presumably, are coming into this new season off the back of what's likely to have been quite a rough run of form at the end of last year. And I guess if there's ever a time we're going to beat a freshly relegated side, it's as a newly promoted team, it's going to be on the first day of the season at home. So... Let's see how good we are, shall we? It looks like the Preston end is absolutely stacked full of people. Hopefully, we're going to start to see some more regular big attendances this season in, a, in an effort to try and drag some more money into the club again. But what I've found in future, when you're doing these long-term road to glories, is often you don't start to get the big attendances until you get the pre hit the Premier League, which I think is a bit odd. Because I think in real life, 
If they, oh, what a tackle from Bacharet Piteta. And a save from Oliver Wright as well. Um, but I think if we, if in real life this little village team charges up to League One with only a 5,000 capacity stadium, I think on your first game in League One like this, I don't think it would be unreasonable to expect a sellout. And it looks like we're nowhere near a sellout, which needs modelling a little better in FM, I think. But then on the flip side of that, I suppose you're not supposed to go up all these promotions in a row. It's nice to see that every single Preston fan has apparently been issued with a shirt. <laughs> They're all in uniform. And Micah Beerith has just scored our first ever goal at League One level. Of course, it's from a corner. Uh, a slam dunk corner, no less. Redmond with the in-swinger to the near post. And Micah Beerith is there to uh, get off the mark. He's now scored for us, uh, I think, five different levels of football. Should we just check that? This is the great thing about doing the youth development save this year. We're having players stick... I mean, if we were doing a normal road to glory, Micah Beerif is long gone. He's not in the team anymore. We've upgraded beyond him multiple times over. But because we're having to stick with him, he scored his first ever goal for us in the Southern Premier League. And he's now scored in every league up to League One. It's beautiful. And, you know, if we keep getting promoted, he could still be playing for us when we get to the Premier League. I don't know if he's good enough. I don't know if we'll get to the Premier League, but it's lovely to see players coming up through the league system with us. I'm really enjoying that aspect of this year's save. Um, Jessup plays it into Beerith again, who's got Redmond on the overlap. Redmond hesitated a little bit when the tackle came in, but it has now leapt on it, fires a shot across goal, and it's saved by the Preston goalkeeper. Zach Redmond looks big. He looks like he's he looks like he's grown since last season. I need to have a look at what his height is because remember he he came through the same. Um, was it DC United? Not DC United. Um, uh, what is it? FC United? The Man United pretend club thing. Oh, that's going to upset some people. He came through that. What is it? It's FC United, isn't it? Not Jessup. Redmond. I've got to, I've got to do this for my own sanity. FC United. So he came through that same FC United side as Danny Pritchard. Was there something in the water? He's only five foot ten. He looked big. I thought we had another big six foot plus player, but apparently not. Uh, right, Brewerton. No, just just nothing happened. Brewerton is another one who's still showing us having five star potential. In fact, the entire back four that are on the pitch right now is still showing us five star potential. Obviously, Bachelorette Pitetta is not our permanent player yet. We will be signing him back permanently just as soon as we can. Um, and Oliver Wright is only a two and a half star player, I think. But we've got Williams coming through to take over from him long term. Nathan Curry's obviously five star potential as well, as is Redmond. I don't think any of the other midfielders or attackers are. So that's probably uh, Troy Cannon might be still. Jessup with the in swinger. And I, actually, I was saying that, I think Jessup is also showing his five star potential because we looked at him before the match. So we've got some players who could definitely be with us for a, a few more promotions yet. Um, Nathan Curry doing very well to win the header there, but it cannons back off the crossbar and Charles thought, he would, thought he'd had a, uh, a little gift dropped onto his foot, but obviously was stood a gazillion miles offside. We're 1-0 up at half time. We've had a very bright start to life in League One. Let's keep it going, boys. It's the big throw from Brewerton into the area and it's just led to an immediate counter-attack from Preston that luckily uh, they've messed up, given the ball to Redmond, and now it's Curry to Beerif, Beerif into Jessup, all the way back to Bandera, seemed like an odd move, but Redmond's in there, and Redmond with the uh, with the effort that forces the corner, and I think he's, he's coming along to take it himself, he's not, it's Jessup to take, Jessup with the in-swinger looking for Davies, but can't find him, and it falls to Hamilton on the edge of the area now, who plays all the way back to Bacharet Piteta, who... Didn't really do anything, I guess, because the highlight ended and now it's Preston with a corner of their own in front of an absolutely packed out um, terrace behind the goal there. I've, I don't think I've ever seen any part of this ground that full. It is standing room only in there. And of course, just like in real football grounds, the, the fans in the terrace absolutely respecting the yellow bits on the uh, on the terracing to say don't stand there and you can see the clear exit routes just like you can on all real football terraces um i'm glad football manager modeled that just right um right let's uh let's have a look at what's going on fitness and form wise um i'm tempted to take off hamilton and get cannon on because we can put Jessup out onto the wing there's an argument for swapping Jessup and Redmond over and playing them both as inside forwards. But 
I'm still loath to do that. I think it crowds things a little bit too much with the two strikers and inside forwards. I know we play Hamilton in there normally. If we swap them over, you know what? I've talked myself into it. Let's play him as inside forwards. Um, perhaps we'll have him as an inverted winger rather than an inside. No, you know what? Both inside forwards. Let's really put some pressure on. Um, and then we're also going to take off Bandera and Cissé can come on for him. I don't really think either of Cissé or Curry are really cut out to be playmakers in midfield. So we might go back to Curry playing in his old faithful, his ball-winning midfielder role that he played in, played with us before. It was really him leaving and vacating that role that led to us switching the system around and starting playing a playmaker. So now he's back. Maybe we just put him back into what his strongest role was before. Um, Ten more minutes remaining. Batarek Piteta, not having the best of days. Campbell can come on for him. Eli Campbell, just the, the utility man who can play anywhere across the defence or midfield, which is always handy. Um, and now we've lost Nathan Curry. That would be quite upsetting if that's a proper injury, having just got him back. We have to drop these two boys back, aren't we? And sort of do this kind of shape. Um, I think we we'll probably swap them over that way around as well. Get them on their more favoured feet and do that. No, not that. That. Um, and maybe do that and hope that we can hold on. But we are now down to ten men against a team that have much better players than we have, and it's it's looking iffy at this point. Jessup plays it forward to Cannon. Um, Cannon just needs to try and keep hold of the ball there. Um, Cissé, who's now the midfield on his own, effectively. Cissé again. I mean, I could move Campbell forward and go to a back three. I don't know if that's dumb. That probably is dumb. Um, we've got too many attackers on the pitch at the moment. That's the problem. Redmond plays it into Beerith. Cannon. Um, Cissé was trying to run beyond him there, which is madness when he's the only midfielder. But he's done it again. Played it into Beerith. And Beerith this time not able to apply the finish. It goes just wide. 85 minutes on the clock now. It's still 1-0 to home, but Preston are, are hunting an equaliser. Ball forward for Beer for the flick on, uh, but Cannon couldn't quite get to it. Um, but it does fall to Cannon now. He finds Beer and Beer gives it back to Cannon, who's through on goal here. Cannon can't get the shot past the defender and Cissé... Once again, he's there to pick up the scrap. Cissé is everywhere. He, he can be the midfield on his own. The only problem is we now don't have a midfield. Um, Harrison Davies is trying to act as the midfield as well as the defender, and it's a very cynical foul from Harrison Davies, but I don't care at this point because at least it prevented the goal. Uh, Redmond on the right-hand side. Cross comes in looking for Beeriff, but he can't connect with his header, and it's the clearance again from Preston, and their, their attack has got their ahead of Shea Charles, but Harrison Davies is there with a fantastic saving tackle, and it counts for nothing because the ball came back in. And there is Preston's equaliser, a 90th minute equaliser. This is going to be a long season, boys and girls. Oh, dear. We gave it everything, but losing Curry the way we did and going down to 10 men was problematic, unless we grab a winner here, which would be beautiful. But no, Beerith with the header. He's Beerith has looked very good today, but once again, can't quite direct it. Goalwards. I mean, I've got to be happy with the performance. They were two divisions above us last year. We were down to 10 men. We didn't lose. It would have been nice to pick up the win, but oh, what's happened to Nathan Curry? Not as bad as it could have been, but we are going to miss him for the first six or seven games of the season now, which is not ideal. So just one change for the Plymouth game, then Cissé comes in for the injured Nathan Curry. Um, like I say, I think this is our strongest side. I'm not going to... I'm not going to change from it too much until it's proven to me that it doesn't work at this level, whether in terms of uh, the system itself or the combination of players that are within it. Um, if it is going to be a, a challenging season where we are in a relegation battle, I do suspect playing a 4-2-4 on a positive mentality might not be the thing to do, but... Let's give it half a dozen games to see if we are actually in a relegation battle first because we certainly held our own against Preston um, until we went down to 10 men. So it would be interesting. This is this is an interesting yardstick game to give us an idea of how we compete against uh, a more normal League One side, Redmond. Charging down. Right, we're playing our beautiful blue kit today, by the way. 
Um, if you haven't looked at the uh, the pre-orders for the home kits, the link is down in the description. The blue one, I think, might just be my favourite. Of course, I'm going to be getting all three of them because it's my boys. It's my team. I have to get all three of them. Um, but the blue one, I think, might just be my favourite this year. That might be the one that ends up framed on the office wall where the where last year's home shirt is at the moment. Um, that is a beautiful goal, by the way, by Callum Cisse, who's another one who's probably scored for us at five, four or five different levels of football now. He's been with us a long, long time. And that is a lovely hit. For someone who's spent all those years playing for us as a right back, gets an opportunity to start a League One game in central midfield. Yeah, he came in at the same time as Beerith. So come through the Southern League, National League North, um, National League, League Two, now into League One, finally getting a go in central midfield and rewards us with a goal. Lovely stuff from Callum C. Say it's 1-0 to home. And maybe we can make maybe we can make this system work at this level after all. Maybe these players are all taking their the appropriate step up to be competitive at this level. Although we've left um I was gonna say we've left a lot of space there, but of course we're the ones in blue. They left a lot of space. Batarek Piteta got the ball and now Jessup with the cross to Beerith and Micah Beerith with his second goal of the season. It's um he's good, isn't he, Micah Beerith. I love Danny Pritchard, I love Troy Cannon. But this is the strike partnership that came together towards the end of last season, Jessup and Beerif. And at the moment, they are continuing to work very well together. Jessup with the cross, Beerif with the header. Pritchard and Cannon are obviously not gone forever. Um, Beerif was being written off two years ago. But like I say, the, the joy of this kind of save is players are going to get chance after chance after chance because we can't just discard someone like Danny Pritchard and wait for another 17, 18 year old to be good enough to sit on the bench. We need to we need to keep him nice and fresh and keep him knocking around the team when he's 25, 26 and able to offer a little bit of experience. And that's what you're going to see with some of these guys. There's going to be there's going to be multiple testimonials in this save, which is very rare for one of my saves. Davies is in and it's 3-0. And we're going up as champions. We're probably not going up as champions. But it is going quite well. That's interesting. What's this little room here? Halfway up the corner. So there's is that like a is that like a cafe? A cafe. Yeah, you have cafes in football grounds, Kev. Um, but there was a deck chair outside. That's what I was so interested about. It looked like a greasy spoon halfway up the corner. The, that might be them now ringing the doorbell. It wasn't the greasy spoon people, I'm afraid. For those of you keeping track of how many times. My doorbell rings during a video. Uh, that was a month's supply of dog food for Dave, which is why Dave is now running around behind me trying to trying to work out what's going on and how he gets at it. You can't have a month's supply in one go, Dave. That would be ridiculous. That would be very ridiculous. Um, but 3-0. We're midway through the second half now. And this would put us up to fifth in the league, which would be nice. Nice little place to start the season. Bandera is going to come off. Went in can come on for him. We're going to take off Beerif as well and get Danny Pritchard on. And that'll do as a couple of substitutions initially. So Danny Pritchard making his first appearance at this level. Let's see how many inches he's grown this year. He seems to grow an inch a season. So I assume he's about six foot eight by now. Um, or has he actually finally stopped growing? Shall we, shall we have a look? It looks like he has finally stopped growing at six foot six, but nearly 15 stone as well. He's, there's a lot of him. There is a lot of that boy. Right, we are going to bring on. I'm going to bring on Muir and put Shay Charles out to right back for my final change. Uh, Muir, I think, has been here even longer than the ones we've looked at before. I think he's been here pretty much since the start. I don't know, he came in at the same time. We signed some. Tell you what, looking back historically, that was our best transfer window, wasn't it? The amount of players from that from that intake who are still first team regulars now. We did all right that year. What magic did we do? I think it was probably a case of that was the first year that we could attract all of the Premier League reserves or Premier, Premier League youth players that were released. They all went straight into the first team and have played ever since. Whereas when we've brought in that kind of calibre of player every time since, they've not got the football. So they've not had the development. I imagine the likes of Muir aren't necessarily any better than some of the players we've had in the last two or three years of being thrown out of Premier League teams. 
but because they've not had the game time, they've not developed to the same level. So I imagine that's what it comes down to. That's one of the reasons I've relaxed the loan rule and I'm letting so many players go out on loan now to try and get them some game time because we can't afford to rotate loads and try loads of young players when we're trying to stay in the league. But at the same time, these 17, 18 year olds need to go out and get game time somewhere. Let's give Harrison Davies a pat on the head. Still only 21 years old, this man. It's ridiculous. 159 appearances and he's only 21 years old. What a player. Right, that is as good a start to the season as we possibly could have hoped for. Um, actually, we probably could have hoped for two wins, but let's not split hairs. Um, we'll play, like I say, we'll play half a dozen or so games now and um, get to the point where we've got a real feel for the division. We know what we're actually aiming for this year. And we'll be back tomorrow with something probably around here somewhere. Looks like we're in the right cups this year as well, which is which is a bonus. FA Cup first round, Papa John's, no FA trophy in sight. It's all fixed, everybody. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.